Welcome to Red Rock Church Online. Whether this is your first time joining us or your hundredth, we consider you family, and we are so glad you're here. My name is Carmen, and a few things that I love about Red Rock are the community that I experience, our collective focus on following God fearlessly, and our ability to be generous as a church because of how generous you are. Thanks to you, we are able to support some great local organizations like the Springs Rescue Mission, Cause I Love You, and the Care and Share Food Bank. We also have been able to meet some individual needs within our community. If you already partner with us financially, you are helping make that generos generosity happen and you're having an eternal impact. Thank you. If you would like to partner with us, you can go to our website at redrockchurch.org and click on Next Steps. Well, today, our lead pastor, Petey Kinder, is gonna jump back into A Church the World Needs Part Two. And for those of you keeping track, yes, this is our second week on Part Two. But first, we're gonna do what we do every week. We're gonna sing some songs of praise and gratitude to Jesus because of all that he has done for us. We are all about Jesus, and we believe that he can change everything for you because he has changed everything for us. Let's worship together. Trust is in 
What's up, Red Rock? Hope you're doing well. If you're new with us, man, we're so glad to have you. My name is Petey, I'm the lead pastor. And I wanna start off today, before we jump into the message, just say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. To my dad, watching right now from Nicholasville, Kentucky, George Kinder. Love you, Dad. Hope you're having a great day today. And for all you dads out there, I know uh, for me, being a dad to my three kids is one of the greatest joys and the greatest honors, but also one of the most difficult callings of my life. And so, man, I'm always trying to become the best dad that I can be and praying for God to grow me into the best dad that my kids could ever experience. I know I'm not alone in that. I know there's some dads right now that are watching this. And I just want to encourage you that the fact that you're taking the time right now to invest in yourself spiritually so that you can grow into the man that God created you to be is one of the most healthy, productive things you can do for your kids. That, that you following Jesus and you learning more about who he is and what he's all about is gonna make you a better dad. So man, keep going, keep growing. I'm right there with you. And uh, if you missed uh, this uh, past Thursday Night Live, if you missed our email that came out, it's all right, no big deal. You can go back to our social media channels and check that out, or you can join our email list. Uh, but we recently released through those channels our plans to resume our in-person gatherings, all right? And I'm not gonna get into all the details here. You can go back and check that out. We'll be talking more about it, but just know that the big day is August 9th, all right? August 9th, we back full force, kids ministry, student ministry, everything. And uh, we got some restrictions in place that are gonna help it be safe for everybody. But August 9th, we back with in-person gatherings. We'll still have church online for anyone who doesn't feel yet comfortable to join us in person. Uh, but August 9th, I'm telling you, you do not wanna miss it. Put, uh, put that on your calendars and, uh, and be there for it. Now, the, the, with, with that date coming, it makes this collection of messages that we're in right now even more important because we're about to jump back into church. All right, like church the way that, you know, some of us are, are used to it, being in person together, singing together, inviting our friends to come with us. We're about to jump back into the thing and this, this quarantine season is about to end, okay? And so I, I know it's gonna look different in some ways and there's gonna be some things that, that feel different and some restrictions that make it a little different here and there, but, but for the most part, we're getting back to normal. And, and, and that's a beautiful thing because even though some, some maybe methods have changed, maybe some look and feel of things have changed, the mission has stayed the same. All right, and that's the whole point of this collection of messages is for us to come together and remember the mission that God has given us and prepare our hearts for what he wants to do when we get back to these in-person gatherings. And God's still working even right now. All right, like our, our church's mission is to help people discover Jesus and follow him fearlessly. And just last Sunday, we had a young woman who watched church online and gave her life to Christ right then and there. We talked with her on the phone that afternoon and we celebrate with her and we still celebrate with her right now, that decision to give her life to Jesus and to start following him. And that, that's why we exist, to help people that don't know Jesus come to know him. And God's been doing it through church online, but I believe he's gonna do it even more once we get back to doing church in person. So this series we're in right now is basically framing up how do we approach church? How do we become a church the world needs? And, and, and what we said last week was that we believe that the church that Jesus came to start the, Jesus the, 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 the church that Jesus died to create was meant to give you the courage that you need to follow Jesus fearlessly. That, that if we'll actually approach church with the right mind and the right heart and the right attitude, that these environments that we put ourselves in, they're actually created to give us the courage we need to follow Jesus fearlessly. And last week, we talked about how we need to discover Jesus, that the first step in the process of learning to follow Jesus fearlessly requires that we just discover Jesus, not just for the first time, but over and over and over, coming back to these weekend gatherings where we learn more about who he is and we discover more of who he is. And in doing so, we get filled up with that courage we need to follow him fearlessly. But today we're gonna to talk about not just step two, but step two and three, all right? Because the, the, the next two steps in this process for us are actually very similar. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna warn you that what we're gonna talk about today is incredibly countercultural. All right, so like the, the, this part of the process that God has given us for us to grow in our faith and to follow Jesus fearlessly, it runs in such opposition to the culture that we live in because today is all about our desperate need, not just for God, but for other people. That if you actually wanna follow Jesus fearlessly and develop that courage, you can't do it alone. You need other people. And that is so against the grain in our culture because we live in a time and, a, and in an age where isolation is at an all-time high. Uh, there was a study that came out two years ago that said that 47% of Americans report that they always feel lonely. 
Not that they sometimes feel lonely, but that half of our country always feels lonely. They always feel isolated. That same study found that 50% of Americans, 50%, that's half of our country, reports that they do not have a meaningful conversation on a daily basis. That they, they, they don't have a meaningful conversation with their family, with their friends, that half the people in our country are always feeling alone and they don't have any meaningful interaction with human beings. I know, I know what you're thinking right now, all right, I know. Because I'm thinking the same. I know some of you that are getting older, I'm, I'm right there with you. I know I, you might think I have a baby face, right? I'm getting old, my knees are creaking. I'm, I'm getting to be like that old man, I feel it. And there's part of me that I hear that and I go, well, yeah, all that, all that newfangled technology, of course they're isolated. These, these darn whippersnappers of teenagers with their phones, but that's actually not the case. That same study that found that 47% report that they're always alone and 50% report no meaningful conversation, they also studied to see if social media and technology had any impact on it, any correlation, and there was none found. It was just that the, the, the statistic proved true whether you were social media tech savvy or not. See, this is not a generational problem. This is not a technology problem. This is a human problem that since the beginning of time, our deep spiritual need, our, our deep spiritual brokenness has been pushing us to isolation. It's been pushing us to, to get away from people and to hide and to be filled with shame and regret and, and to not get to know people, to not have people in our lives. But what we're gonna see today is that if you wanna become all that Jesus created you to be, like if you wanna be the man or the woman that God created you, like when he knit you in your mother's womb and he put you together, if you wanna become the full, mature version of the man or woman he created, he, that he created you to be, you have to have other people involved in that process. Today I wanna to show you from Luke chapter 10, and this is a, an instance from the ministry of Jesus where up to this point, Jesus has been gaining followers like crazy, all right? People are loving coming to discover more of him. They're, they're, they're loving his teachings, they're loving for themselves, just coming and learning more about Jesus. But now he's gonna turn the tables a little bit and he's gonna call them into a deeper understanding of who he is. He's gonna call them to take a step in becoming a fearless follower of Jesus. Look at what he does in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse one, it says this. It says, the Lord now chose 72 other disciples, other followers, other people that had come and given their lives to him. And he sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places that he had planned to visit. And these were his instructions to them. He says, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. So just, just put yourself in their shoes for a second. Like you're a new follower of Jesus. You just, you just discovered who he was, and, and maybe that's you right now. Maybe you're watching this, and you just made the decision recently to start following Jesus, and you feel like you're new in this whole thing. And all of a sudden he says, all right, that's cool that you're coming to learn about me. That's cool that you're coming to discover me, but let me tell you what's gonna take. You need to grab a friend you need to pair up with somebody and I'm gonna send you on a mission. I mean, that would be so terrifying, right? And I, 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 I love how Jesus does this. He's like, not only are you gonna go out on a mission, you're gonna go out on a mission and, and it's gonna be a little hard. In fact, I don't want you to take any extra money, no extra shoes, no, no extra bag, and, and don't stop and talk to anybody on the road because what Jesus is saying there is, he, 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 he wants his disciples to be able to focus on two things, God and the person next to him. God and this other person, this person that they're linking arms with on a mission together. He doesn't want anything else to distract it. And maybe you've been on a trip before with somebody that like, you kind of know, but you kind of don't. And it's kind of awkward, right? I, just a, a few years ago, I went on a, on a just two day trip to New York City with a, with a friend of mine who was really more of, more of an acquaintance than a, than a good friend. And you'd have thought 48 hours was more like two months. It felt like it was forever long because we didn't know each other that well. And, Man, I was trying to find anything to distract me from that dude because I just wanted something to fill the awkward void. And Jesus says, no, no, none of that. Focus on the mission I've given you and focus on the person I'm sending you with. Because if, if you want to grow, you need someone else. In fact, and so the, the, the way we say it at Red Rock is what you need is you need to connect on a team. You need to connect on a team. You need some people that you can link arms with 
and do something together. You, you, you need some people that you can, that you can kind of consider family, that you get to know them and they get to know you and together you do great things for God and you see God do great things through you that that's actually what you need when it comes to this next step in, in your spiritual journey. It's not just showing up on the weekend, it's linking arms, it's connecting on a team because when you do that, church starts to feel like family. Church starts to feel like home. Like for me, I remember when I first started following Jesus and, and I, I didn't really know much. I mean, I didn't know the guys that I was hanging with. I didn't know the, the, the guys speaking to me on stage. I didn't know anything about the Bible, but I was loving Jesus. But man, the minute I started serving, the minute I jumped onto a team, uh, everything changed. And let me tell you, what they had me doing at church at the very beginning, when I first started following Jesus, it was really technical, it was really complicated. I was on the chair setup and chair tear down team. It was super hard, okay? Like big, big deal, right? Like anybody could do it, but it made all the world a difference. Because all of a sudden for me, this place that I had always been afraid of, this place that I'd always been kind of intimidated by, it started to feel like home. I started to get to know some people. They started to get to know me. And I started seeing God use me in ways that I never thought he would use me. And from there, they asked me to serve on the production team to run the soundboard. I'm like, I don't know how to run a soundboard but they taught me and through that process, I got to know more people and more people and more people knew me. And, and I started seeing God do all these incredible things as I was linking arms to these people, as I connected on a team. And before you know it, this, this young punk of a kid that didn't grow up in church and didn't know anything about Jesus was on a team serving in church and church felt like my second home. I mean, these people started feeling like family to me. I'm telling you, when you have family backing you up in your journey of following Jesus, it'll give you the courage you need to follow him fearlessly. And that's exactly what happens to his followers. Look at, look at the next verse. When they come back from this mission, after they've connected on a team, they've linked arms, and they went out and they did something incredible that Jesus had asked them to do, look at what happens in the next verse. Verse 17, it says, when the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. <laughs> They're shocked. They're like, Jesus, it, it works. Like when we go out and we, we link arms with other believers and we go and we, we, we say we're gonna do something great for God, we're gonna love people like Jesus loves people, incredible things happen and they're so filled with joy, like their lives are changed. And then, and, and Jesus responds to that. I love this next verse, verse 18. He says, yes, he told him, of course. And he says this, he says, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. But look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. No, 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 no. Rejoice becomes your, because your names are registered in heaven. I love, I, I, I love that explanation that when, when these disciples come back and they report how joyfully uh, this, this, this whole thing was to them and, and, and what it did for them, Jesus says, yeah, 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 that's the thing. Because when you're connected, you can do anything. Like when you're linking arms with, 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 with other people that love Jesus and you're on a mission together, it gives you the courage to overcome anything. And you know, it, it, Jesus doesn't literally mean scorpions and snakes. He's talking about all the crap that this world throws at us. He's talking about every hard circumstance that you've ever experienced. If you experience it alone, good luck. But if you experience it when you're connected with other people, when you've got a family to support you in it, you can get through anything. God can do incredible things if you'll step out of yourself and connect on a team. And, that, and honestly, our, our church has so many stories of this. Our church has so many stories of, of the, the, the families that founded this church and the families that have stuck with this church over years and years and years and have worked hard and, and have been in the trenches together and have been through hardship, have been through scorpions and snakes of circumstances together. But, but together, they've seen God do incredible things through them. And now because of that, we have this beautiful church in the middle of Colorado Springs that's poised to make a difference. I'm telling you, when you connect with other people, God does something inside of you that is so incredible. You start to see God move in such a powerful way. It gives you courage like you've never had before. But I love how Jesus ends that. Jesus does not say that the, the point of this, that, that, that the thing you should celebrate is the work you're doing. It's so like for us, you know, we're, we're trying to reach people for Jesus. And, and we love it when more people show up and, and hear about Jesus, but that's not the thing that we rejoice about. He pushes it a little further in to more at the heart level, the thing that really unites us. He says, don't rejoice about the evil spirits obeying you. You should rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. 
that when you link arms with other people in the church and you, you become part of this family, you realize that the number one thing we all have in common is that we were lost and now we're found. We were dead in our sins, but now because of Jesus, we're alive. Our names are registered in heaven, that there are people in heaven that know about us because of what Jesus has done for us. And that's the thing that we come back to every time. I love, I love that transition because Jesus is already starting to lay the groundwork for us, that when you start following him and you connect with other people on a team and you start, you start serving together, you start seeing that your faith grows deeper and, 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 and God actually starts pushing you to even greater levels of trust, even greater levels of growth in your life. Fast forward just a few years for these followers of Jesus and, and you see that things have changed pretty quick, that God has pushed them into an even, even deeper relationship with him. You see that everything has changed just a few years later when we, we pick up in, in Acts chapter two. And, and this is when the movement of Jesus is exploding and they're seeing God do incredible things and the church is growing. But look at those same followers that were previously sent out in pairs, right? Those, those same followers who had connected on a team all of a sudden, Jesus has done something so much more with them. Look at Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. It says this. It says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their property. They sold their possessions and they shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day and they met in homes for the Lord's Supper, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That went from zero to 100 real quick. I'm telling you, they were just barely discovering Jesus a bit ago. They were going out in pairs of twos and seeing God do incredible things. And, and, and all of a sudden now you fast forward a few years and they're selling their homes and giving the money away. They're meeting in, at, at church every day and worshiping together. They're, they're, they're bringing believers into their homes and they're sharing meals. They're doing life together. They're sitting in circles around the fire pit talking about all these incredible things that God is doing. You see, you're, you're seeing what it looks like for people to grow. The, 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 the way we say it here is you need to grow in a group. You connect on a team, you start serving together, and all of a sudden you start seeing that, oh, there's so much more to grow in. There's so much more to discover about this relationship with Jesus, and you need other people to do it. You need a crew of people to sit around, a group, a circle to sit in, and talk about what God's doing in your life. You need a group of people to sit in and to process through the, the Bible you're reading and the sermons that you're hearing. You need a, a group of people that can call you out, that can get to know you, that can get to know the real you, Right, like not the fake you that you put up at work, not the fake you that you put up in front of your neighbors, the real you. You need a group that can get to know you inside and out and help you grow in the person God created you, created you to be. And for me, this is when everything changed. I'm just telling you, like as one broken Jesus follower to another, when I started coming to church and listening to messages and being a part of that, my faith grew for sure. When I, when I started serving, my faith grew and I, and I, I connected on a team my faith grew. When I got into a group and started letting other people in on the real me, the raw version of me, and I started letting people challenge me and hold me accountable, and I started processing my faith out loud with other people, that is when my faith took off. And the same happens for so many people that call this church home. That is the story of so many people that their faith grew once they, once they got into a group and they started growing together because that's how God created to work. And I, again, I, I know what you're thinking right now because I, I think the same thing. If I'm in your shoes right now and, I, and you're not already on a team and you're not in a group, I know that you're probably thinking, what if I get on a team and in a group with a bunch of people that are nothing like me, right? I get it because that, 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 well, that's scary. That, that, that's awkward, but that's the beautiful thing about Jesus is that when Jesus stretched his arms out and he died on a cross so that you and I could be forgiven and free, he brought unity to all backgrounds. He brought unity to all skin colors. It, it, it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what your past looks like. When you come into the church, when you come into the family, we are all united under the most important thing in the world, that God loves us in spite of our sin. That God loves us 
in spite of all that he knows about us. We're united under that. And so, man, you can be in a group with people that aren't like you. You can be on a team with people that, that aren't like you because you actually have more in common with them than you do anyone else. It's that Jesus loves you and now you're ready to follow him. And that's what it takes. If you wanna become the follower that Jesus created you to be, you can't do it alone. You're gonna have to step out of your comfort zone, I'm telling you. You're gonna have to step out of your comfort zone and connect on a team and grow in a group. So as we get ready to jump back into our in-person gatherings, you know, one of my biggest prayers as your pastor has just been that we would all take a next step this summer. You know, not knowing how long quarantine was gonna last, how long coronavirus was gonna be a thing that we have to deal with. It, it, it's, it's just kept getting longer and longer and longer. And the longer it's gotten, the more I've prayed that God would do something in your heart and in your life to cause you to have the courage to take that next step in fearlessly following Jesus. I, I honestly, I, I don't really want us to come back the same church. Not, not because there's anything wrong with us before, but I, I don't want us to come back the same church because I want all of us to have grown closer to Jesus. I want all of us to have taken a, a, a next step. And so that's where I'm saying, man, for me to you, can I please just encourage you right now, if you're not on a team or you're not in a group, take that step. Man, we got teams left and right. You, you, you don't have to know the expertise of how to do it. We can teach you how to do everything, whether it's kids ministry or, or student ministry or guest services or a production team. And, and honestly, even, even if you don't want to come back to in-person gatherings yet, you're not ready. We're gonna have an online team that's focused on reaching people and praying for people online and, and uh, engaging with people online. We got, we got tons of opportunities for you to step up and join a team. And, and I know right now in, in, in the summer might be a, a hard time to join a group, but go ahead and click that step anyways. Go ahead and take that step so that we can get you ready and plugged into a group when they start back up in August or September. Don't let anything get in your way. Let's come back from this season a more engaged church. A, 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 a church that's showing that we don't just say we're fiercely following Jesus, but we're actually taking the action steps to do it. I know that's what I'm trying to do in my own heart and in my own life. And so, man, let's get ready. August 9th is coming. Uh, next week, we're going to wrap this series up with the fourth and final part of the process of fearlessly following Jesus. And uh, let's get ready, man. I'm telling you, August 9th is going to be a big day. You don't want to miss it. So, man, let me pray for you. Let me pray for our church and we'll wrap it up. Jesus, we love you. And we are grateful that you don't let us stay in isolation. God, I'm grateful that you haven't, let, you haven't let me remain in isolation, that you've drawn me into community over and over throughout the course of my walk with you and, and, and the ways that you've grown me through that community, the ways you've grown me through other relationships. God, I want that so bad for our church. So I pray for the person right now that's on the other side of this camera who's scared, intimidated, or nervous. God, I pray that you help them to take that step to fearlessly follow you and trust that on the other side of that step of faith is a reward. On the other side of that step of faith is a greater relationship with you and greater courage in fearlessly following you. God, we love you so much. Uh, I, I pray for our church as we get ready for August 9th, as we get ready to regather together in person. I pray that you make that a special day for us. I pray that it be a day when we see that, that our mission has not changed and that people come to know you like never before. God, I pray for this next year of our church that we see more people discover who you are and more people fearlessly follow you. We know it's possible. We know you want it more than we do. And so we ask for that and, and, and we believe that it's possible. God, I pray for the person that's watching right now who isn't quite sure what they believe. God, I pray that their curious heart would continue to burn for you. I pray that they'd feel even in this moment that you're real, that you're not a fairy tale, that, that you're, you're not a myth, that you came and you lived in history and you're real, and you're the way, the truth, and life. God, I pray that you keep that curious heart burning in them as they keep discovering more of who you are. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us for Church Online. If you need anything for a prayer request or to talk to someone, go to our website at redrockchurch.org to the info bar. There's someone available to talk with you right now. If you want to stay connected with us throughout the week and get updates on the church, follow us on social media, at Red Rock Church. We love you. Have a great week. See you next time.